It goes without saying that Adult Swim revels in producing some of the most polarizing content ever seen on television. This is the network behind shows like Aqua Teen Hunger Force, 12 Ounce Mouse, Perfect Hair Forever, and Assy McGee, just to name a few. I have no doubt believing the creative teams behind those projects were fully aware they were going to piss off just as many people as they entertained. Still, as far as Adult Swim figures are concerned, perhaps no two people represent the polarizing nature of the network better than Tim Heidecker and Eric Wareheim. Whenever Tim and Eric are brought up in any capacity to people I know, the reaction is almost one of high enthusiasm or unrestrained anger. This duo fully embraces the you either love it or you hate it mentality better than any other creative team I can think of. I'm definitely in the pipe camp of people that think that Tim and Eric are amazing. Whether it be their television shows, live performances, solo projects, or even their hilarious interviews, Tim and Eric's brand of comedy has brought me a copious amount of joy throughout the years, and I've been a huge fan of most of their projects. Whether you love Tim and Eric or hate them, I often hear people questioning how and why these somewhat unknown entities rose to prominence on Adult Swim so quickly, and in the process, how they surrounded themselves with so many popular comedians and celebrity friends. The best way to determine that is by going back and looking at their very first project, which was a little show called Tom Goes to the Mayor. Tom Goes to the Mayor is a, uh animated series starring Tim Heidecker as an entrepreneur named Tom, who has recently moved into the small town called Jefferton. Being full of ideas, Tom takes his prospects to the mayor, played by Eric Wareheim. And that's all you need to know. Tom goes to the mayor. Analysis over. Fish. Okay, not really. But before I delve more into the show itself, let's examine how this got onto the air, which in turn also explains the duo's rise to prominence. Tim and Eric met each other in 1994, both attending Temple University's film school department in Pennsylvania. They quickly became friends due to their shared bizarre sense of humor, and started collaborating together on off-the-wall comedy skits, short films, and cartoons. While they produced a wide variety of content around this time, the one that garnered the most attention was a four-minute short film called Tom Goes to the Mayor. In this film, an entrepreneur named Tom Bradley visits the mayor of an unspecified town to pitch the idea of opening up two restaurants within the area. After a ridiculous pitch meeting, the mayor gladly accepts Tom's offer, and in song no less. Tom, it was great meeting you. I can say the same for me over here. One notable aspect of this short film is that it wasn't quite live action, and it wasn't quite animated. Instead, Tom Goes to the Mayor's background here consists of really simplistic drawings that look like they were made of Microsoft Paint. The objects in the room are a mix of crude drawings and stock images. As for Tom and the Mayor, Tim and Eric took pictures of themselves doing goofy poses and facial expressions. Afterward, they ran said photos through an image filter that gave them a blue and white monocratic look and pasted the pictures onto the background they created. They then narrated over the images they took to create dialogue between Tom and the Mayor. Points for experimentation, I suppose. For how strange this short was, Tom Goes to the Mayor proved to be a success for Tim and Eric. It ended up being selected for screenings by the Philadelphia Institute of World Cinema, as well as being included in the University of Pennsylvania's Institute of Contemporary Art. After graduating from university, Tim and Eric posted an assortment of their creative work onto their new website, timanderic.com, which is still operational to this day. Aside from this, they tried their hands at stand-up comedy while working conventional jobs and coming up with plans to perpetuate their career further. In 2001, the pair had the idea of compiling their work onto a DVD and sending it to some of their favorite comedians in Hollywood, such as Robert Smigel and Conan O'Brien. They did so, but considering the DVDs had no contact information, on top of this being a very unconventional process in the first place, Tim and Eric initially didn't hear back from any of the talents they wanted to contact. That was until one comedian saw their tape and viewed Tim and Eric's brand of comedy as being really good. You might even say that he thought that they were Saul good. Man. That's right, one of Tim and Eric's DVDs landed on the desk of then Mr. Show co-creator, and later Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul star, Bob Odenkirk, who absolutely loved what he saw. He described Tim and Eric as having, quote, a smart sensibility and unique voice that was not a hodgepodge or copy of anything. In particular, Odenkirk saw the potential in the Tom Goes to the Mayor short film and proposed the idea of creating a follow-up to it. Thus, in 2002, Tim and Eric created Tom Goes to the Mayor Returns. This second short follows the same formula as the first one, with the one difference being that, thanks to Odenkirk's involvement, production values went up slightly. 
The noticeable improvements included higher quality photos of the characters, having more dynamic backgrounds, and including a cast of supporting characters that featured Mr. Show's other co-creator David Cross, who was obviously notified of the project via Odenkirk. Now with two separate short films that could be used as pilots for the series, one of which featured a high-profile comedian, Tim, Eric, and Bob Odenkirk were ready to pitch their idea to television networks. In 2003, Eric Wareheim met Aqua Teen Hunger Force co-creator Dave Willis at an adult swim party in Philadelphia, where he passed on the Tom Goes to the Mayor pilots. Willis took said pilots to the network executive Mike Lazo, who absolutely loved them, and greenlit the series. This perpetuated Tim and Eric to move out to Hollywood and begin production on the first season of Tom Goes to the Mayor, with Bob Odenkirk acting as the executive producer. The first episode of the show premiered on November 14th, 2004. Now with all that covered, let's talk about the show itself, starting with the titular characters. The Tom Bradley we saw in the first pilot was somewhat of a successful entrepreneur that seemed to have good people skills. That is much different from the Tom Peters of the show, who is insecure, passive, unassertive, socially awkward, and will let pretty much anyone walk all over him. He's the type of character you might describe as being innocent to a fault, kind of like Butters from South Park, but as an adult who never matured. For example, Tom will often replace swears for words like crickets, ship, shirt, or darn. That's all well and good, but it's to the point where he calls the town Dam the Darn due to his inability to say the word damn in any context. Tom is hated by his wife, not respected by his stepkids, and manipulated constantly by the mayor and other characters. He also has no real job aside from proposing these ideas to the mayor and is hinted to often be in a lot of financial debt. They really went out of their way to make Tom the most pathetic character imaginable, but they do manage to make him a lovable loser in the process. The writing manages to strike a perfect balance of rooting for and feeling somewhat sympathetic towards Tom, while still making it entertaining to see everything blow up in his face time and time again. I really love the contrast between Tim Heidecker's goofy facial expressions and his flat voice acting delivery when it comes to Tom. There are also a few times where Tom does reach a breaking point and will yell or freak out, although this happens very rarely. Any fan of Heidecker knows how absolutely hilarious he is whenever he pretends to be angry, so of course he nails those scenes and Tom goes to the mayor. In fact, going back to the show and seeing him play a much more passive character, as opposed to say, on cinema where he plays an unhinged, irritable narcissist, really shows his comedic range. On the other side of the coin, we have the mayor, who is never given a proper name throughout the series. While friendly at least on a superficial level, the mayor is a corrupt, juvenile, irresponsible, and possibly insane individual who never really listens to anyone around him. While Tom is often hesitant and unsure of himself, the mayor is extremely impulsive and will often say or do the first thing that comes to his mind. Essentially, the mayor is an eight-year-old trapped in an adult's body who sees Jefferton as his own personal playground. It's also shown that the mayor is easily distracted and highly forgetful due to not taking anything seriously. One running joke throughout the show is that it's implied that the mayor forgets who Tom is between every episode, as he continually demands that he introduce himself whenever he walks into the office. He also continually forgets or misspells the name Tom Peters, which is extra funny considering how simple and straightforward that name is. You could potentially consider the mayor to be the antagonist of the series, although most of the time, he doesn't necessarily want anything bad to happen to anyone around him. His childish view of the world prevents him from understanding any of the serious consequences that could result from his actions. There are plenty of times where the mayor will use Tom as a scapegoat whenever something goes wrong, even though it's usually, mostly, the mayor's fault. These two have the perfect dynamic with each other, which really becomes the driving force for the entire series. It's sort of a classic straight man, crazy man dynamic, but with a unique twist. In a lot of ways, they're complete opposites of each other, but in other ways, they're actually quite alike. Both Tom and the mayor on the surface are friendly individuals who have no malicious intent. It's just that, due to the mayor's stupidity and Tom's weak will, they end up causing destruction wherever they go. They're both portrayed as somewhat immature man-children, but in very different ways, with Tom never having learned assertiveness and the mayor never learning restraint. They're both kind of likable in their own ways, even though the mayor is manipulative, and it's hilarious watching Tom fail. You could also potentially see this as commentary about how certain individuals in positions of power end up making brash decisions due to lack of proper supervision. Tom in a lot of ways represents the everyman that continually gets screwed over by people in higher positions than him. The mayor represents corrupt high-ranking individuals who are friendly on the surface, but beneath that are extremely manipulative and doing everything out of their own self-interest. Of course, they're framed as man-children in this show, which heightens the commentary for the sake of comedy. 
Say what you want about Tim and Eric and their humor, I never consider it to be random for the sake of random. There's always a method and a point to what they do in most cases. Tom Goes to the Mayor is one of Tim and Eric's few projects that I would say adheres to a specific narrative formula for almost every episode. The formula is this. Tom comes up with a new idea, takes it to the mayor, the mayor warps the idea, puts it into practice, it backfires disastrously, and Tom takes the blame for it. There are certainly times where this formula is subverted, but even when it is, there is always some remnants of its general plot structure woven into each episode. I know that when a lot of people first watch Tom Goes to the Mayor, they can be very confused and off-put by the show's random, bizarre, and surreal humor. I do think, however, that as the show goes on and you become more accustomed to its general story structure, it helps ground the show in a certain level of familiarity. It's kind of like Phineas and Ferb or Tom and Jerry, where before an episode starts, you pretty much know how it's going to play out in terms of the general plot beats. The real joy and humor in the show is seeing how they take that formula and go off the rails with it in different ways. Each installment is great at ramping up the stakes to a ridiculous degree. There were occasions where I felt the episode started off kind of slow, but by the time they reached their conclusion, I was laughing quite a bit. The thing about Tim and Eric's projects are that, for as out there and random as their brand of comedy can get, they usually create a level of relatability and authenticity in a weird way. This often comes in the use of their satire. To give some examples, The Awesome Show is a parody of public access and low-budget television, Bedtime Stories is a parody of horror anthology series, and On Cinema is a parody of internet reviewers. Tom Goes to the Mayor goes for a bit of a different approach. Here, the relatability comes more from the use of the formula itself. The show keeps throwing bizarre logic at you, and after a while, you kind of accept it in this weird trippy way. It's not something that you're going to pick up on until you've seen a few episodes and understand where the show is coming from. That being said, I do like how the formula is stated within the show's title. Tom indeed goes to the mayor. That's no lie. Now let's talk about the, uh, animation. The visuals for this show follow the same basic method that the pilots did, being comprised of filtered pictures of the cast being placed onto crude backgrounds that mix drawings with stock images. While the pilots were nothing but a series of still images, the show itself contains actual animation within these visuals, although it rarely comes from the characters themselves. Instead, the objects around Jefferton tend to be what give the feeling of movement within the show, while the characters usually remain in set poses, albeit wiggled around occasionally. Does this qualify as an animated series? Compare this to, say, The Awesome Show, which I do think most people would consider to be live action. However, if you really think about it, The Awesome Show contains almost as much animation as this show does, it's simply going into the backgrounds rather than the performers, for the most part. That's not really much different from Tom Goes to the Mayor, considering the animation is surrounding photos of the cast. I can definitely understand why this visual style would throw off and divide people, even on a network well known for their crudely animated series. As cheap as some of their other shows look, this might be the first time I've watched one of them and questioned what it even means to be an animated show in the first place. Personally speaking though, I absolutely adore how the visuals are utilized for comedy. The fact that the show looks so rent visually really emphasizes the downtrodden atmosphere of Jefferton perfectly. The colors are gross and the sky is always gray. It has no style, no beauty, and no character. This is probably best represented in the show's intro that's a fake television commercial for Jefferton that inadvertently makes the town look as unappealing as humanly possible. I sometimes hear people describe Tim and Eric's comedy as being it's funny because it's not funny or bad on purpose which are not sentiments that I agree with or even fully understand. The only way I'd describe their comedy as being bad on purpose is in the visuals of their shows, which are meant to look as disgusting to look at as possible, but in an endearing way. The fact that nothing looks or feels quite right or consistent in this universe is a great utilization of the show's general surrealistic nature. I have heard some people call the visuals in the show lazy, but I disagree. Sure, it does look crude, but does it really look that much cruder than many of the other content that Adult Swim was producing? Not really, it's just a different type of crudeness. In fact, the visual restrictions in my opinion actually end up requiring a lot more out of the actors. Much of the cast really knows how to be funny in either live action or with voice acting, but due to Tom Goes to the Mayor being such a bizarre method of making a television show, this would have been nothing like anything they've ever done previously. Whenever the actors are having their photos taken for their characters, they have to rely so heavily on their body language and facial expressions in every single picture. They can't be physical with their movement, thus they have to find other ways to emphasize the comedy within their performances. This allows for a lot of humor to be possible at any moment. 
Even during scenes which would otherwise be considered expository plot beats. Even when a character isn't saying something in a scene, they're almost always making a goofy expression in the background. This gives the attentive viewer a lot to pick up on, while at the same time being as simple as, Double chins are funny. There's not a single face anyone makes in the show that isn't goofy in some way, shape, or form, even in their idle poses. Often the pictures don't even really match the tone of a character's voice, making for a really funny clash. It's not hard for me to understand why so many people wanted to play guest roles in Tom Goes to the Mayor, beyond simply having connections with Bob Odenkirk. This would have legitimately provided a new type of performing method for them, the likes of which they hadn't experienced before, and likely never will again. Not all of the show is done in this style though, as there are many points where the live action is fully utilized. This usually occurs when a character is watching something on a screen like a television or computer monitor. A lot of these moments parody infomercials, news reports, product tutorials, and other such low-budget productions. There are other times where characters will be filmed during close-up shots of grotesque images, like a character eating or sticking their hands into food. These moments are a great diversion to the momentum and tone of the rest of the show, and add a lot of visual emphasis for comedic effect when needed. It's more than safe to say the live-action segments within this show became the basis of the skits that would be found in their later projects, particularly Tim and Eric's awesome show, Great Job. Tom Goes to the Mayor, much like Tim and Eric's other work, is absolutely full of great and hilarious songs. Tim and Eric are both gifted musically, and much like Matt Stone and Trey Parker, or even Seth MacFarlane, they do use this to their advantage in their comedy quite a bit. Saying that out loud kind of makes me hope that Tim and Eric produce a Broadway show of their own in the future, but I digress. A lot of the songs here sound improvised and are very funny. I bet Tim and Eric could have gotten jobs writing jingles for commercials had they went down that route in their creative partnership. There are even moments where the guest stars will perform songs too. Thus, Tom Goes to the Mayor features tracks from Tenacious D and Sir Mix-a-Lot you won't find anywhere else. Plenty of episodes also parody the formats of different television shows, like sitcoms, documentaries, or holiday specials. The episode Rats Off to ya is a parody of Christmas specials with a storybook and narrator popping up between every scene. I love how the narration always hints that things are going to get better for Tom, but when the scene plays out, things just get worse. In the episode where David Cross guest stars, he's making a low-budget documentary show. I love his fake Australian-British accent, and how he's live-action whenever he points the camera at himself, but animated when he's not in the camera frame. It's also very meta as Cross's character Todd is making a documentary, which is based on the premise of the show itself, that being Tom going to the mayor. The episode Gibbons plays overly sentimental music throughout, as a parody of sitcoms like Full House that always try to have that forced, tender moment. There are other episodes with cliched sitcom music, an episode done in flashbacks, and parodies of other things like the 60s Batman show or Scooby-Doo. That being said, the show takes these tropes and makes them their own. Tom and the Mayor aren't the only members of this cast though, as they're surrounded by a myriad of supporting characters. We have Tom's wife Joy, who I'm pretty sure they went out of their way to make as annoying, unpleasant, and despicable as possible. With that said, she's probably one of the funniest characters in the show for those very reasons. For the photos of this character, they got actor Michael Q. Schmidt to dress up in drag, while her voice is provided by Stephanie Courtney. Courtney also appears in the show as the mayor's receptionist, Renee. Tom has three stepsons from Joy's previous marriage who he later names Brendan, Brandon, and Brynden after a rebirthing process. Long story. These three don't say anything throughout the entire show aside from moaning, and are implied to have serious mental issues. Tom and the mayor often take their ideas to get approved by the city council, a group of three men who usually oppose the duo's crazy ideas, but approve them anyway due to their general disinterest. I thought the main councilman's voice sounded very familiar, and looking it up, it turns out he was played by Ron Lynch. For those of you who don't know, Ron Lynch plays Mr. Lynch on home movies, Ron on Bob's Burgers, and Ron on Dr. Katz. Looking at his IMDb, he also played Dr. Lynch on the Sarah Silverman program, Mr. Lynch on Raising Dad, Ron Lynch on Portlandia, Ron on Please Understand Me, and Dr. Lynch in Two-Legged Rat Bastards. He seems to have made a healthy career out of playing different characters all named Ron Lynch. Considering the city council's names are never stated, I'm going to pretend that's his character's name here too. But by far the most notable recurring characters are none other than Jan and Wayne Schuyler of Channel 5 News, who make their first appearance in episode 4. Working as the only married news team in the Tri-County area, Jan and Wayne Schuyler are played by Tim and Eric themselves. These characters are significant for being Tim and Eric's introduction into live-action sketch comedy, 
which turned out to be their bread and butter going forward. Not only that, Jan and Wayne Schuyler would go on to be immensely popular characters for Tim and Eric, appearing in many of their different projects. They would reappear in Tim and Eric Awesome Show Great Job, where they would often be accompanied by Dr. Steve Brule, played by John C. Riley. Once that character got his own spin-off called Check It Out with Dr. Steve Brule, Jan and Wayne Schuyler followed him there as well. These might be the most recurring characters that Tim and Eric have ever played that aren't fictionalized versions of themselves. Even in these early Tom Goes to the Mayor appearances, Tim and Eric absolutely nailed their depictions. That about covers the main recurring members of this cast, but Tom Goes to the Mayor has many other supporting characters who are often played by comedians and celebrities. Given this was a new project created by people who had next to no experience within the comedy industry, I doubt that most viewers were expecting to see so many familiar faces within the show. By far the most prominent celebrity of course is Bob Odenkirk, which makes sense given he executive produced the show. He appears as a wide variety of characters in the majority of the show's episodes, sometimes in live action, sometimes in the animation, sometimes both, and sometimes as an off-screen voice actor or narrator. Given Odenkirk's background in sketch comedy via Mr. Show, he's probably the perfect person to play such a wide assortment of roles. He's absolutely hilarious whenever he's on screen, especially as his character Wizard, who might be my favorite. I admit this is just my speculation, but I really do believe Bob Odenkirk's involvement with Tim and Eric's parodies of infomercials and low-budget TV programs were a heavy influence on the type of commercials Saul Goodman would produce in the Breaking Bad universe. Given most of the supporting cast were likely sourced from Odenkirk himself, it should come to no surprise that the other guest spots are often filled with other Mr. Show alumni. David Cross, who appeared in one of the show's pilots, makes a second appearance in Season 1, which I've already talked about. Brian Posen, I hope I'm saying that right, makes multiple appearances in the series as Tom's old friend Gibbons, who is sort of like that annoying pushy friend that you don't really like but hang out with anyway. For this character, they put Posen's head on the body of a child, which makes it even funnier. Other Mr. Show members that make an appearance include John Ennis and even Tom Kenny, who at this point probably had the most fruitful career out of any of them. The Mr. Show alumni doesn't end with the actors though, as looking at the credits for season 1, you can see that Dino Stamatopoulos was credited as a writing consultant. Stamatopoulos was absent from season 2's production, as he was busy creating a little show called Moral Oral. Still, it's cool that Tom Goes to the Mayor technically acts as not only Tim and Eric's Adult Swim debut, but Dino Stamatopoulos's as well. It's not just faces from Mr. Show though, as Tom Goes to the Mayor features a wide variety of guest stars in pretty much every episode. Heck, the very first episode features both Jack Black and Kyle Gass, who perform a song about bear traps. Other big name comedians they managed to wrangle for this project include Sarah Silverman, Patton Oswald, Fred Willard, Maria Bamford, Gary Shandling, Louis Anderson, Paul Rubens, and Dave Foley, just to name a few. It's not just comedians though, as even general actors were looking to get in on Tim and Eric's shenanigans. I'm not entirely sure how they managed to secure Jeff Goldblum for episode 4, but he does a really great job, as does Robert Loja. Sir Mix-a-Lot's rap is also easily one of the most iconic moments from the entire series. Not only is it funny to see these celebrity cameos, but we also get to see the foundation of a lot of their relationships with Tim and Eric begin to unfold. Most of them went on to make many appearances in the duo's other projects. This is especially true in Season 2 of Tom Goes to the Mayor, where we start to see the likes of Zach Galifianakis, Michael Cera, and John C. Riley make appearances. I haven't even gotten to my favorite cameo appearance on the show, barring Odenkirk's contributions, which is none other than Michael Ian Black as, well, Dr. Michael Ian Black, in two separate episodes. rick a tick a tick tock tick tock tock Ring, ring a ding ding, ring a ding ding, rick a dick, rick, rick a dick, rick, ring a ding a ding ding dong. I've seen a lot of Tim and Eric's detractors often criticize them for relying heavily on having connections within the comedy industry to get where they are. I'll admit, there is a certain level of truth to that. Tom Goes to the Mayor wouldn't be as great of a show as it is if it wasn't for the great guest stars. Particularly, Bob Odenkirk deserves a lot of praise for helping produce the show, getting a bunch of other comedians involved, and putting Tim and Eric on the map. Say what you want, but for me it seems inarguable that the guests that they have on their shows truly believe in Tim and Eric's material and genuinely want it to succeed. Especially at this point, the duo weren't exactly making bank in the comedy industry, but so many people participated in their project. Hell, Tom Kenny was well into making Spongebob money at this point. I'm sure he didn't show up to Tom Goes to the Mayor for the paycheck. I'm glad he's here considering he has one of the best cameos in the entire series. 
There's a certain level of authenticity that comes with this type of comedy that's hard to describe. I guess seeing so many big stars in such a ridiculous, low-budget program portrays them in a much more vulnerable light than we're used to. Even if you do believe Tim and Eric got to where they are through their connections, there's an oddly wholesome sense of camaraderie they have with the people involved with their projects. I personally find it hard to believe that so many talented comedians, and even general actors, seeing so much joy in working with Tim and Eric, doesn't indicate that they're talented on some level. Now, don't get me wrong, if you don't like their comedy, I totally respect that, and moreover, I completely and utterly understand it. You'll never hear me say that it's for everyone. However, I also don't think it was a fluke that they garnered such a huge cult following, and given their popularity, their sense of humor has resonated with a lot of people. As a way to celebrate the wrap-up of the first season of Tom Goes to the Mayor, Adult Swim aired a behind-the-scenes making of special immediately following the season finale on June 12, 2005. If you're familiar with Tim and Eric, you can probably guess that this isn't going to be as straightforward as it sounds. The special does use real behind-the-scenes footage of the show, but it intersplices it with skits that frame the production in a nonsensical way. A lot of the time, it's hard to even determine whether the footage was filmed specifically for the special, or if it was genuinely part of an episode's production. It is pretty cool seeing the process of what the actors were going through during the photo shoots, so despite the special's best effort, I think I learned something. That was the only special of Tom Goes to the Mayor that Adult Swim aired on the network itself, but the Tom Goes to the Mayor Complete Series DVD contains a lot more extra content. This includes bloopers of Jan and Wayne Schuyler, a slideshow of artwork from the show, and a segment called Night of a Thousand Stars, where we see them directing all of their celebrity guests. We also get a behind-the-scenes look at Odenkirk's contributions through a segment called The Bob Zone. Like the original behind-the-scenes special, these DVD extras are a combination of genuine footage and skits to the point where they're hard to distinguish. They're a lot of fun to go through because you never really know what you're going to get. By far my favorite bit of supplemental Tom Goes to the Mayor material is a segment called Boiling Point. This 25-minute mockumentary follows a legal dispute in which Eric gains full control over the show and has a falling out with Tim. This results in Tim going to Odenkirk to find a new gig, and Eric replacing the role of Tom with Michael Sarah. I love how straight-faced and committed everyone is here, even if it was just for a silly DVD extra. Boiling Point is absolutely hilarious, and was a great start to Tim and Eric doing documentary-style segments, which would be explored a lot more in their subsequent projects. The first season of Tom Goes to the Mayor was produced by Bob Odenkirk's production company, Dipshot Films. For the second season, Tim and Eric created their own production company called Apso Lutely Productions. This company would go on to produce all of Tim and Eric's future projects, as well as high-profile shows from other comedians, like Nathan For You and The Eric Andre Show. The guy saying absolutely is Tim's dad, with Tim being the one holding the camera. The context of this clip is that apparently the family had just got back from a vacation, and Tim asked his dad to sum up the trip in two words. He responded by saying, absolutely. Tom Goes to the Mayor's second season came out even better than the first one, as you could really tell that the crew was finding their footing. It aired almost exactly a year after the first season ended. I'm not sure if the show was cancelled or if it ended on Tim and Eric's own terms, but either way, this ended up being the final season with no real sort of conclusion. I mean, I don't know what the conclusion for this show would have been, but this final episode certainly doesn't feel like it was meant as a finale. Whatever the case, this worked out in Tim and Eric's favor, as Cartoon Network immediately greenlit their next series after Tom Goes to the Mayor ended. Tim and Eric's awesome show Great Job would go on to be a much bigger success for both the duo and the network, so all's well that ends well, I suppose. The legacy of Tom Goes to the Mayor has lived on in Tim and Eric's other projects, though. Jan and Wayne appear frequently as stated, and the Cinco brand, which was first mentioned here as Tom's cell phone company, became a major driving force of the awesome show. There are also times where the mayor and other characters will refer to birds as chippies, which carried over into the Where's My Chippy skits in The Awesome Show. The episode Pepperoni from The Awesome Show's second season even featured a live-action segment from Tom Goes to the Mayor. Really jarring to see these characters without the blue and white filter, but I think that was the point. In a way, The Awesome Show already existed in some form via Tom Goes to the Mayor, since the parodies of public access television started here, albeit in service of a story rather than random skits. I will say that Tom Goes to the Mayor isn't my favorite thing that Tim and Eric have ever done. I do prefer The Awesome Show, On Cinema, Bedtime Stories, and some of their other projects. But to go back to what I said earlier in the video, I'm a huge fan of Tim and Eric's work in general, so just because this isn't my absolute favorite, doesn't mean I didn't think it was great. Tom Goes to the Mayor is consistently funny, and really laid the foundation for a lot of what would be explored in their other projects. 
I personally became acquainted with Tim and Eric through The Awesome Show, so I'm not sure how Tom Goes to the Mayor would have landed for me if I wasn't already familiar with their brand of comedy. Tim and Eric never made another quote-unquote animated show after Tom Goes to the Mayor, so it's safe to say they prefer the format of live action as a whole. If Tom Goes to the Mayor did get a third season, I'm willing to bet at least one episode would have been done almost entirely in live action. Adult Swim executives described Tom Goes to the Mayor as one of the most polarizing shows they ever aired, saying that people either loved it or hated it. This is a reputation that also befell the awesome show and Billion Dollar Movie. I think with later projects like Check It Out with Steve Brule, On Cinema, or Bedtime Stories, Tim and Eric generally got a lot of positive reviews from most outlets. Even people I know who don't like Tim and Eric generally seem to enjoy shows under their production company, like The Eric Andre Show or Nathan For You. None of those projects would be a reality if it wasn't for Tom Goes to the Mayor, so this show deserves a lot of respect and attention for its significance. On top of that, you should also check it out because it's a really funny show in itself. For all the joy that Tom Goes to the Mayor brought both directly and indirectly by laying the groundwork for the future, I have but one thing left to say to this show. Rats off to ya. Hi, this is Mike the Editor. Would you like to support our channel? Please do so by watching our videos, dropping us lots of comments, good, bad, whatever you prefer. If you like this video, smash the like button with your face. If you're not subscribed already, please do so. And remember the bell icon for notifications to new videos. We also have a Patreon, which the link will be down there somewhere in the description. If you want to help us out monetarily, that'd be great. Uh, also, the video you just watched, fair use policy, blah, 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 something, something, something. We also have a Discord server, which please come and join the chat. Uh, the link will be also in the description. We already got a lot more content in the pipeline, so please stay tuned. Thank you. Bye.